male and female reproductive systems. The whole goal is to produce offspring, but not only that, we want to produce diverse offspring. That's the reason we actually reproduce sexually, because we're combining male and female DNA into a zygote, otherwise known as an embryo or developing baby. And by doing so, by combining two separate people's DNA, we make a very diverse zygote. Very different from bacteria that uh, replicate asexually, where it's basically an exact replica, a copy of themselves. Whereas here, we're making a brand new human. Super cool. Now, in order to excessively diversify all these chromosomes, we are going to go through a process called meiosis. And meiosis is a type of cell division where the number of chromosomes that we start with will actually split in half. So a normal functioning human cell will have 23 pairs of chromosomes. What does that mean? Well, chromosomes are just DNA organized into these little chapter books called chromosomes. And so in each person, male and female, all of our cells have 23 pairs of them. Where did they come from? Well, here's a pair of chromosome ones. This is a chromosome one from this person's dad. And the other one would be a chromosome one from that person's mom. So quite literally, all of their cells in their body will have this type of arrangement. One from dad, one from mom. When we get to chromosome two, we'll have one from dad, one from mom, and so forth and so on 23 times, okay? Same thing goes for the female. This is that female's father's chromosome one and the chromosome one from mom. Which makes sense because we are quite literally just a combination of our parents' DNA, right? Now, keep in mind the goal though of meiosis. It's to split the chromosome number in half. Why do we want to do that? Well, if we split this person, he has 23 pairs of chromosomes. That's 46, right? This person also has 23 pairs, 46 total. So we want to split this one so that there's 23 at the end. So then we can combine it with the 23 from the end for mom. And then we can make the 46 total in the baby, right? So what's going to happen? Well, this cell in the male is actually going to be called a spermatogonia, literally translating to baby sperm. And this is going to be called an oogonia literally translating to baby egg. So baby sperm and baby egg, great. But what's gonna happen here? We're actually going to first duplicate the DNA on both sides. So what will happen is we'll have one cell, one's gonna turn into the sperm, one's gonna turn into the egg, and they will have twice the number of chromosome ones as well as twice the number of chromosome twos and so forth and so on 23 times over. But that, seems <laughs> but that seems paradoxical because we're duplicating the DNA. I thought the goal was to basically just split them right in half, right? Why can't we just split them immediately? Well, if we just split them in half, follow this logic. If this one just became the sperm with 23 unpaired chromosomes, what would baby be exactly like? This person's dad. And vice versa, if this one just split and threw the chromosome one from mom and chromosome two from mom and so forth and so on into the sperm, this baby would be exactly like Mom, you get the picture? <laughs> so we don't want our babies to be exactly like our parents. We want them to be a blend of a lot of us, right? So what we do is we duplicate it. And at this point, there's an amazing process called crossing over that occurs. And that's basically where these chromosomes are going to swap DNA amongst each other. So each chromosome may look like this now. So now each of the four chromosome ones that are in here all have a blend of both mother and father's DNA. Really fascinating. So now once they're in those four on both sides, so I can kind of draw an example over here, we will divide these cells twice. So we'll divide them once, a couple of those chromosomes will get passed on, and then we'll divide them again to make four new ones, each with an unpaired chromosome. And the same thing will happen on this side. I'm just going to skip some steps all the way to the end. Now, so these four cells, right, will now have half the number of chromosomes. So this is chromosome one. In reality, they have a chromosome two, a chromosome three, and so forth and so on, but they're unpaired. So therefore, in total, each of these have only 23 unpaired chromosomes. And all four of them will turn into mature sperm cells. Wonderful. Now, in the female's case, same way. We've diversified our chromosomes, but only one of these four will be selected. The female's a little more choosy. So this one, once again, has 23 unpaired chromosomes, and this will turn into that oocyte. 
which is basically the mature egg cell. And obviously, if both of these two come together, we have now formed our zygote with, with 46 chromosomes, and we could add 46 diverse chromosomes due to that crossing over right here. And then the sperm and the egg that were produced have a blend of DNA from both their moms and their dads. Now, fertilization likely happens up here in the fallopian tubes of the female reproductive tract after being released by the ovaries during ovulation. And once it travels down to the uterus, it'll implant into the uterus and begin developing eventually into a whole baby that will then exit out the birth canal called the vagina. And then you have that newly formed offspring with a diverse set of chromosomes.